think I broke Unlike this little bit. Unlike we don't have to pay for this by the inch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they have a live recording of them. Well, here we go. Our odyssey begins. So in this uh, talk, I hate to call it lecture, uh, in, this, in this video, we'll use video, that's a good term. In this video, I want to give you just a little background on the book and an and a overview that maybe can help uh, guide the journey. I'm also going to stay on my notes so that I don't wander because that chocolate cake thing went a little bit longer than probably necessary. So I'm going to use my notes so I can stay on point. Now, this is not a technical course. This is just so you can enjoy the book and have fun reading it. So this isn't going to get you through a college class or pass a high school test if you're reading the book for a class, though it might. What I want to do is make the book fun. So I want to give you enough so that you understand what's going on. So you don't read the book and just think, I, I don't get it. So the whole purpose of this Ulysses course, if we can use that word, or this uh, Ulysses series, is to make the book fun to read and a little less opaque. Uh, because I sincerely believe you can read the book strictly for pleasure. You don't need a lot of in-depth analysis. But as I said in the chocolate cake video, you, you need to kind of know a little bit about what you're getting into as, as you go forward. So, you know, if you'd never seen chocolate cake, you wouldn't get it. So I'm not going back into that again, but you understand what I mean. So in this uh, video, I want to give you some background on the book, just something to work with. And in the next video, we will start with episode one. So, first of all, the book, Ulysses, shadows the Odyssey, the uh, ancient Greek classic uh, supposedly written by Homer. They say supposedly because I don't think that's verified by historians, but again, we don't want to get too technical here. So, the, the, the book shadows the Odyssey. It's not based on the Odyssey. Joyce would cringe if somebody said that his book was uh, based on the Odyssey. He, he wouldn't like that. It's in a totally original work, but it shadows the Odyssey in that there are certain uh, progressions which follow the, the same path in both books. So it, it's shadowing it, but it's not based on it. It's not a modern adaptation of the Odyssey. It's uh, I, I wouldn't even say it's based on it. In fact, the, the chapter headings that are often put in, for example, chapter one is uh, Telemachus. That's the sun in the Odyssey. Joyce didn't put those chapter headings. Those were added later by publishers thinking that, well, if we can make this book intelligible, maybe more people will read it. So Joyce didn't add those chapter chapter headings, episodes, really. So it, it's, it's, it's a loose shadowing of the Odyssey. But it, it, it does shadow it in some very interesting ways. And throughout these uh, videos, we'll talk about that a little bit. So I, I wanted to get that out of the way first. It's not, a, it's not the Odyssey redone, to, to keep that in mind. You might, however, read the Odyssey. It's worth reading, and it will give you more insight into the book. So if you read it a second time or a third time, it's, it's good to have a little background, and, and it will help because there, there are parallels. Now, the main characters 
in Ulysses are Leopold Bloom. He's our hero. Uh, Leopold Bloom is a middle-aged man, half Jewish. Uh, he's married to Molly Bloom. He sells advertising in newspapers, so he goes around town and solicits ads and for a local paper. How would you like to run an ad? And he has ideas about advertising. One thing that's very interesting about Ulysses is you'll find it's timeless. A, a, a lot of stuff that happened over a hundred years ago now, we're talking about 1904, could be today. You know, there's still guys out there selling advertising. My phone rings all the time with people selling advertising. And it's the very same kind of stuff. So you'll find a, a lot of the stuff that happens in the book is totally timeless. And the things that would really date it, Joyce leaves out. So there's no, like, very specific reference to, uh, I would say, lack of technology. So you wouldn't say, you know, that couldn't happen today because everything in the book is is pretty much timeless. And I think that's an interesting aspect. So again, back to Leopold Bloom. He has a daughter, Millie, who is uh, 16, and she is now off in another place uh, working for a photographer, learning, she's learning photography and she's helping him out and this is her big adventure away from home and her first time extended period away from home and uh, Bloom thinks of her often and there are subtle references to the photographer's assistant that somebody thinks somebody else is getting involved with and so watch for any references to Millie or the photographer assistant and that's a sort of a indirect re reference to Millie unless they say Millie and then it's a direct reference. Um, Leopold and Molly had a son who died shortly after birth. That son is Rudy and uh, he is a very important character to this book even though he's dead Leopold often thinks of the son he could have had and and that part of him that's missing by the son he doesn't have and one of the central themes in the book is the relationship of fathers and sons and we'll get back to that later um, the other main character of the book is Stephen Daedalus Stephen is an autobiographical character of uh, James Joyce, really. It's, uh, Stephen's life is based loosely on Joyce's own. In fact, the portrait of an artist as a young man, Joyce's earlier book, is really an autobiography. He expresses a lot of the things that happened in his life through Stephen Daedalus, who is sort of an alter ego of Joyce himself. Stephen is a poet, he's a smart guy, he's always thinking. So you have to remember when you're reading about Stephen, he thinks like a poet, so his words may be complicated, and he likes to play with words, he would explore words, so he doesn't just say the grass is green, he might elaborate on the color of the grass and the feeling of the grass in a, in a, in a mystical representation of the grass. So where people get confused in this book is in some of the language, but we have to remember we're talking about a, a really smart guy who is a poet. And if you've read poetry and had trouble with poetry, you'll understand why some of these thought processes can be hard to follow. And that's okay. You don't have to get it all. You can enjoy poetry without understanding every last word uh, in a poem, right? So that's kind of part of this whole Ulysses experience is that one of your main characters is a poet and he tends to think abstractly. So when we're hearing or reading Stephen's thoughts, they may be a little abstract. Don't let that bother you. Just enjoy the poetry of the way that Stephen thinks. That's the important thing is to just enjoy the way he plays with words and where his mind goes. And of course the third main character of the book is Molly Bloom. Now Molly is at the beginning and at the end and she's very important to the book. She's she's kind of the heart and 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 soul of the book as as it were. Um, she and Leopold have been married for some time. 
she is a singer and she's very attractive and rather voluptuous and she's uh, sort of desired by a lot of the guys around Dublin that that know the Blooms um, and it's sort of hey we're good or the Bloom's wife, you know, that's it's that kind of thing. Now, since the death of, of Rudy, uh, Leopold has lost his drive. And so they have not had relations for quite some time. And Molly, being a rather vibrant and, and uh, oh, I would say healthy woman, uh, desires the sexual interaction and so she is having an affair with her agent blazes Boylan and Bloom is aware of it they don't discuss it he sort of looks the other way he tolerates it though it disturbs him and I'll talk more about this later just suffice it to know that Molly is involved in a relationship and and Bloom knows and this day, this June 16th, 1904, Molly has an appointment with Blazes Boylan to meet with him. And that is a sexual arrangement. Now, a little more background on the book. Joyce was a real stickler for detail. He wrote the book in Europe. He, he left Ireland and he was in uh, Paris, uh, he was in Trieste, uh, which is a part of eastern Italy, northeastern Italy, it's uh, up there. And he was in Zurich for a while, he moved around. Most of the book was written in Paris, but he really was fanatic about detail. So he would often write back to friends and family and say, I need you to go to a certain address and give me the exact color of the building or the exact distance walk from from this bar to this hotel and give me the exact time it takes you to walk that far and then walk from this place to that place and tell me exactly exactly how long it takes you to walk there now he does this because there are episodes where he has people walking in different places in Dublin and they actually pass each other and it was important to Joyce to specifically coordinate those times. That if you started in this place and somebody else started in that place, within five minutes you would cross paths. So he was fanatic about detail. So again, some of the difficulties that people have with the book is all this detail. Well, the detail was important and it really mattered to Joyce that things worked. He wasn't just making it up as it came along. He was actually following very precise detail. In fact, at the end of the book, when when Bloom gets home and it's late at night, the, the houses have like sort of like in New York, you know, where people walk down and their front door is, is below the street level. He has a house like that, but it has a locked gate at the front and he doesn't have his key. And so he has to hop over the fence and jump down to the front door. And he was concerned about whether a guy this age could actually do that. So he wrote back home and said, you know, I need somebody to jump over the gate and see if you can do it without breaking your neck. And give me those exact dimensions so I can describe what it would be like to hop that fence and, and do it. So he, he really was into every single detail. In fact, Joyce famously said that if Dublin was destroyed, you would be able to precisely recreate it from this book, which, you know, it's it, it doesn't fully describe every detail of the city, but the detail that is there is precise. So you can know that if you're reading something that says this time uh, t took five minutes to walk this far, or he walked from this place to that place and ate lunch, that's doable within the time frame. It's all realistic and extremely precisely planned. So. I think that's interesting, it's worth knowing. Now, there are very specific themes in the book that we should watch for. And the main theme of the book is usurpation. Usurpation means that you are overthrown by something else or someone else. The king is usurped by the young 
prince or the wicked noble. They throw him out and take over the kingdom. So the, the heart of this book and just about everything that happens is based on the idea of usurpation. Now, who's usurped? Well, if his wife is having an affair, Leopold Bloom is usurped in his own house. Ireland is usurped. It is under the control of the British. The Irish language is usurped because people speak English. Old Irish is not spoken anymore. And we'll talk more about that in when we get to our lesson on chapter one. So usurpation, people are overthrown, displaced. That's a key to the book. And Leopold Bloom is usurped in, in many ways. He is Jewish, half Jewish. His father was Jewish and married a Gentile. And the Jews are, are uh, as many points in history, looked down on in Ireland. There are many references through the book of, of people disparaging the Jews. So he is usurped in that sense as well. So he's usurped as a husband, as a father. He's usurped as an Irishman. He's a second-class citizen. Ireland is usurped by Britain. The people's freedom is usurped by the church, which controls their thinking and just about every aspect of their life. So usurpation is a huge theme of this book. Look for it. Pay attention. Look for where usurpation comes up, and you'll have a good time because Joyce slips it in in all kinds of interesting ways. Another huge uh, theme of the book is, um, or, or metaphor is, is Ireland. And again, I, I mentioned that Ireland is, is usurped by the British, but look for themes of, of Ireland. Ireland is generally represented by green, so when there are references to peas, that's Ireland. And another uh, color, the Irish flag is green and orange you'll see uh, references to orange. So any green orange references Ireland, you'll notice it's uh, represented by the sea, by green, by the river uh, Lyfe, which is also mentioned in the book, which flows through Dublin. So watch for references to Ireland. And, and Ireland, uh, Joyce was disappointed that Ireland couldn't come up and rise up and overcome and and not only throw up the usurpers but get into the modern age and, and grow up. Another uh, symbol that you'll find throughout the book is keys. The, the keys occur in many places. Keys have a lot to do with usurpation. If, uh, if you're renting a place and, and you get behind in your rent and the landlord throws you out, they change the locks. Your key doesn't work. A key can let you into something and a key can keep you from getting into something. So, uh, or a key can let you in, not having a key can keep you from getting in, obviously. So keys matter and keys play a role in usurpation. And look for references to keys. They come up subtly in, in many places. Another key theme in the book is the relationship of fathers and sons. Now this is a really complex relationship and Joyce recognized that there are really two kinds of father-son relationships. There's the kind where the father is threatened of being usurped by the son. You know, the, the Oedipus thing that, you know, the, the son will overthrow the father. That's really important and you'll see many examples of bad fathers. Stephen Daedalus' own father is essentially abdicated his role. He's usurped to uh, alcohol. He's usurped to British rule. He's usurped to just giving up lack of morale. He's let his son wander the city. He's let his other kids just raise themselves. So he's abdicated his role. There are other fathers, on the other hand, who, who foster the development of the son and look for succession, like the, the good king that that teaches the prince and develops him and brings him along so that someday he can be the future king. 
So there are two kinds of fathers, and we find that uh, you well, you decide, you decide on who's which. But pay attention to this and look for those roles when you when you see fathers and sons. See if you can decide, you know, which is this the 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 better kind or the not better kind. But it's very important to the book. Alcohol is very important to the book. Alcohol is a usurper. Alcohol takes away power. Now Joyce was a heavy drinker and probably an alcoholic, so it's interesting that he recognizes this, but he sees that the Irish, you know, they do waste a lot of their life smashed, and there's a lot of characters in this book that have no life because of alcohol. So pay attention to what alcohol does all throughout the book, from the very beginning conversations all the way through to the very end. Alcohol is one of the pillars that are part of this book. Death is also very important. Now, Joyce subscribed to an idea of history being cyclical, that history repeats and history repeats, and it, it, it's a constant cycle. This was put out by a guy, well, as many people, but there was a, a person, Vico, you can look it up, V-I-C-O, and, and Joyce really liked his idea of the cyclical nature of history. In fact, his last book, Finnegan's Wake, is really based on that whole notion of everything being cyclical. So death and the cycle of life is also a very important theme to this book. So you've got your three characters, Leopold Bloom, Stephen Daedalus, and Molly Bloom. Your main theme, usurpation, to be overthrown, displaced from your rightful position. Now some people accept that and roll over, and some people overcome. What is so wonderful about Leopold Bloom and what is so wonderful about the book is that the book is a comedy, not a tragedy. It is very uplifting and the wonderful thing is that Leopold Bloom overcomes not by being tough, not by being an asshole, not by winning the fight, but by being a good, decent guy, he overcomes all the usurpations, and we'll see how that happens. But look for instances of greatness in Leopold Bloom, the, the little things that he does that the other characters would never consider. And I'll point a few of them out, but for fun, these are the Easter eggs throughout the book. Look for the stuff that Leopold does and you'll find lots of very interesting examples. Notice as you go through the book that Joyce is master of the subtle. So he doesn't club you over the head with an idea. There are little subtleties, and I'll help you see those in the, in the early videos, but as we go, you'll see them yourself, and I'll not point them out. I'll help you with the harder stuff. But Joyce loved subtlety in his writing, and that's something that also can be difficult because we're not used to that. We're used to get to the point, be obvious. And I probably should do that now because I'm over time, but I love the book and I can't help myself. Watch for these little subtleties. When something seems unimportant, pay attention, okay, because it might be very significant. Enjoy the poetry of the wording. You don't have to understand everything. This is not a book you're going to get the first go around. Just enjoy it. Go with it. Think of that river Liffey that flows through Dublin. Some people say Liffey. Just enjoy that ever flow into the sea. I hope you enjoy the book. In the next video, I'll get you introduced to chapter one. And I'd love your comments. So please, Put comments below, subscribe so you can get the whole series, um, ask questions, and I'll answer as best I can. Thank you.